Testament to Pelly cases. This is how Sigma shipped the rental lens to me. No surrounding box, just straight up in a Pelly case. So I used to own the EF version of this lens. There's one that actually feels lighter, kind of curiously. It's a slightly different model. It's got a button on it. So I'll be curious to see how it compares. It is absolutely freezing cold. It's been in the back of a truck all day. Okay, I'm using the OM1 to film for once, which uh, I don't normally do. I've got the very small 17mm lens on it, which is really decent considering how tiny it is. But um, I've made up the S5 to be my wildlife camera for the day, so I've took the grip on it. It's a very nice feeling body, actually, when, um, when it's got the grip on it. And I'm going to go chuck it on that 150 to 600. Let's see how it feels. So as you can see, it's still cold enough here. Um, and the birds are letting me be quite close to them, which is nice. So I'm just going to connect up the Sigma lens. One nice feature of the Lumix cameras is that their body cap actually locks like a lens does, which is quite unique. I've not actually seen that on any other camera bodies. You might be asking yourself why I'm bothering to try out a long lens on a camera that is terrible for wildlife photography. And it's because I am actually seriously considering swapping to Panasonic cameras full time because I really like the way that they operate with the S5 II. It's a potentially viable wildlife camera. So I used to own the EF mount version of this and I'm quite surprised to find that this is 700 grams lighter in the L mount. When it comes to the L mount you really only have two options in terms of long lenses. You have this or the brand new sixty to six hundred, which I am seriously interested in because it would also work as a landscape lens or a long landscape lens for which I have quite a lot of uses. I have very much enjoyed my time with the OM1 but one of the reasons why or maybe the primary reason why I'm considering changing is that light conditions like this where the sun actually exists are getting increasingly rare here in Wales. It's overcast probably 90% of the time. And I really do need a camera that works well in low light. And unfortunately, the own one is good to a point, but then the color quality drops off quite significantly. As somebody who used the uh, SLR version of this lens, I can say they've notably fixed the balance of it. It used to be extremely front element heavy, but with the change to this composite lens hood and I presume a reworking of some of the internals, they've shifted the balance back quite a way to the point where I could actually hand hold this very comfortably now, whereas before it was just a little bit too much. The S5 very much doesn't like uh, pulling focus back, much like the IM1 actually. Um, the only problem I'm having here is that the uh, focus wheel isn't having any effect, which is probably a setting. Yeah, first time, oh god, okay. The problem I have with the colours of the OM1 is not that it colour shifts as the ISO goes up. Pretty much every camera does that, including this. The S5 does do the same. But it's more that it actually loses a lot of colour data and it's very, very hard to restore them back to how they should look. I think in particular the magenta shift loses a lot of the natural greens and blues. Oh, I'm going to stretch my legs for a minute.
Okay, day two with uh, testing out a long lens on the S5. And all I can confirm so far is that the autofocus is truly dreadful and that the low light performance is actually even better than I expected. So I'm going to try and get some actually good photos today and we'll see what happens. But the autofocus is a problem. Well, today is a good example of why I'm trying out the S5 for wildlife photography in that for the past week now, the weather reports have said today will be constant sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. And that's not the case. It is, I don't know, misty, I guess. There's a constant cloud cover all day and over the last year in particular, this has started to really wind me up in that I cannot reliably uh, follow weather reports and trust them and go out early in the morning knowing that it will be a nice morning. One of the reasons it is so annoying is that the, uh, the sunsets are often very, very nice, but they're not ideal in a lot of the places that are local to me. Uh, they're pretty good here at Forest Farm in the centre of Cardiff, but pretty much everywhere else they are quite difficult due to the direction of the light. So sunrise is what I need, but I, I quite literally cannot predict when it's going to be a nice morning. I can't go out every morning before sunrise, and so it's essentially just luck, which is quite frustrating. Now, as we all know, good light makes for great photographs. But what happens if you just don't get good light ever? Do you just give up? And that was one of the reasons why I originally thought that the OM-1 would work well for me, because on the OM-1, you're able to shoot wide open at f4 on the 300 millimeter prime with the depth of field of f8. So for small birds, that's very good, and I thought it would still be roughly equivalent in terms of noise to full frame because you're able to shoot with quadruple the amount of light. But it's not really the case. I think it is comparable to a few different full frame cameras, but the Panasonic S5 is phenomenal in low light it's actually quite shocking how much better it is. Once I'm back in the office, I'll put up some, uh, some more demo photos or do some comparisons, because so far in my testing, I found that the S5, even at its max ISO of 51,200, still retains more detail and better color than the OM-1 does at 12,800, which is a really big difference. And I would even say that it's better than that as well. I would say it's probably closer to the OM-1 6400 performance. And that is not what I was expecting at all. Um, and it means that shooting at f8, or you can get up to f6.3 on these Sigma lenses, you actually are gaining something. And even more than that, it maintains far better color in the shadows than the OM-1 does. I'll put up a demo photo that I took yesterday and I've been taking bad photos on purpose. I've been taking photos of birds in the shade rather than in the sun um, because I want to test this and I took a photo of a robin. I think it's at ISO 20,000. It was in the shade and I stuck it in Lightroom, uh, processed it through DxO Pure All, which I normally do anyway, and brought the robin back up as if it was in good light. And remarkably, it, it has detail in the feathers. It has color that is correct for what I could see at the time, but the cameras normally can't pick up. 
So, so far, I've been very impressed. So yes, the main things I wanted to test on the S5 were the low light performance and whether the object detection is actually any good. And so far, both of those seem to hold true. The object detection is odd. It works better than it appears because it does actually focus on animal faces. So far, I've not had a problem with it not getting the eye in focus because I usually shoot with an aperture deep enough anyway that if the head is in focus, then the whole head is in focus. Um, but I found it very comparable to the OM-1 in that regard. It just has a worse autofocus system in that it doesn't have phase detect. So it really is not good at locking onto birds, whereas the OM-1 is very, very good. Hey, Maisie. I think I've said on a video before, but I take more photos of robins than I do of any other animal. The only problem I find with a good thermos, of which these little ones are quite nice, actually. They're about the size of a, a can of drink, so 330 milliliters, I think. Um, but unfortunately, they're, they're very good at insulating, and so they're always absolutely scalding hot any time I want to drink it within like the first 12 hours of having made it. The robin's just down next to me. Let's see if we can get some video on the S5 actually. feet of you. <laughs> you guys are so difficult to film. So far I would say that the image stabilization in the S5 with this Sigma lens is not as good as the OM-1. The OM-1, the image stabilization, you can shoot smooth video on the 300 millimeter lens, even with the 1.4 extender. It's only when you've got the two times extender on that it starts to have more trouble. This I'm finding a little bit awkward. Um, it does support body and lens stabilization, but I'm not entirely certain that it is better if you use the lens. Kind of get the feeling it might be more stable using the camera only. Another reason that I'm interested in swapping to this system is that I find the combination video and photo shooting on the OM-1 to be a bit hit and miss mainly because the OM-1 requires you to use tracking AF if you want to use object detection in video mode. And unfortunately, its tracking setup is not very good. This camera doesn't require you to do that. I'm going to sit on my extremely tiny seat pad for a little bit and uh, keep an eye out for these birds. My one bit of confusion with the swapping between video and photo on the S5 is there doesn't seem to be an obvious way of changing your shutter speed and aperture once you're in it. I'm presuming that it uses the same one that you set for photo, but that's not actually ideal probably make sure that uh, I haven't put peanut shells all over this rental lens. All right, time to finish burning my lips and go for a wander, I think. Ow. 
It's now two days later. Uh, I sent the lens back off to Sigma today. Hopefully it gets there all right. Um, it is sealed by impregnable zip ties. But overall, I'm very pleased with the outcome of the test. The things that I wanted to test on the S5 worked out really well. The performance in low light is notably better. I'm more increasingly confident that the S5 II will actually be a viable wildlife camera for me. That does most likely mean that I will be trading in my OM-1, which in some ways is a shame. Uh, I've very much enjoyed using the OM-1 and uh, they seem to be some of my more popular videos, but I think I've covered most of the things that are specific to that camera anyway. And uh, ultimately it comes down to what I enjoy using the most for photography because making videos is very much secondary to me to taking good photos. I love taking photos of birds and animals and just photos in general, to be honest. And for me, the S5, aside from its autofocus, has been the most pleasing camera to use that I have ever used, which is weird and not at all what I was expecting, particularly for a company that is comparatively very new to the photography world compared to the likes of um, you know Canon and Nikon and companies like that. Sony I guess doesn't really count they were Minolta before so you know I've been genuinely impressed with the way that the Panasonic camera works and especially if you are a hybrid shooter so you are shooting photos and video it is a wonderful camera to use for that and the S5 II is very much more of the same, but with a vastly improved autofocus system and some other nice quality of life upgrades for the video uh, and a 30 FPS electronic shutter mode. I'm a little bit concerned about the slow mechanical shutter, but actually in using the S5 for this past weekend with the long lens, there wasn't any situation I found myself in where I would have preferred to grab the OM-1. As I looked back over my archive of photos I've taken in the last year, my favorite photos are all shots that could have been taken with any camera. Uh, the action shots I do take, though they're interesting and not my favorite photos they don't speak to me they don't have uh something really appealing about them like some of the more static photos i've taken and even if the electronic shutter mode for some reason wasn't perfect on the s5 ii i don't think that would be an issue up there in my reasons for wanting to swap uh, alongside just enjoying the experience of using the S5 more uh, has to be my need for a low light capable camera because as you can see in the second day of this video the light just is gone a lot of the time here and it's become so frequent and so frustrating for me over this past year that I am willing to put up with some other downsides and a slower camera by all accounts than the OM-1 in order to be able to take photos in those situations. So hopefully soon I'll have a new toy to play with. There won't be an unboxing video because I don't have the patience to slowly and delicately unbox something. I'm more of a rip it out sort of person. Um, but there will be some other videos around it coming up. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.